Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor and I'm watching the rod tip as always while I talk. Don't waste any time. Get out there fishing, particularly in the winter. You need to get your bait in the water as long as you can. Anyway, if you watched last week's video, uh, towards the end, I said that the conditions were changing, some warmer weather was on the way and I was going to change species. As it happened and really in line with what I was talking about last week, as far as the weather's concerned, it didn't materialise. In fact, it went the opposite way and it's, uh, it's even colder and the water temperature has plummeted and so this week I'm actually up for a challenge cold water perch fishing now I've already been out and I've put a little clip together didn't do full length uh, filming but I've put a little clip together and uh, I've been off to a good start and through the course of this video I'll talk you through the challenge of cold water perch fishing and maybe a few little tips to help us on our way. So here's the video of what's gone on so far. some cracking fish there. Now for me, perch aren't in the same category as crucian carp, rudd and tench. In other words, when the water temperature drops to a certain level, basically we can forget targeting those particular fish. Um, they will feed right the way through the winter. On the other hand, they don't fall into the same class as species such as roach, chub, grayling, which will feed regardless of how cold it gets. In fact, I've had roach, the coldest I've fished in the UK, when the wind chill factor has been minus 20 absolutely freezing and I've still caught I wouldn't go for perch when it gets that cold but when it's like it is now water temperature has plummeted but it's still reasonable then I'm definitely up for the challenge of catching fish in these conditions it's suddenly become quite windy it was quite a nice day and then out of nowhere a little bit of a, a mini storm has, uh, has whipped up from the north so the rain's coming down, quite cold rain. Um, actually, as I'm looking at it now, it's turning to sleet. So I've got the brolly up. If you want a tip from me, whenever you go fishing in the British Isles, always take a brolly. The weather forecast for today was actually uh, dry. But as we know, things can change suddenly without any warning whatsoever. And we've actually got quite a, quite a sleet shower coming down right now. Well, as quickly as it came in, it's gone. That was a three minute storm and the blue sky is coming back. I'm into a fish and it feels like a perch. And it is not a big one, but A, in these conditions and particularly after that, uh, that ale storm, I'm happy to, uh, to bank it, brilliant. Now I was asked recently, can I show on video how to use a disgorger? I think that's a text from my wife. Can I show how to use a disgorger? Well, as it happens, I need one in this instance. First job for me, reading glasses. I can see the sun 93 million miles away, but I can't see what's going on under my nose. Right, let's get this fish out the water, out the net, and I'll show you how to use the disgorger. First thing I do, get the line in my mouth, keep it nice and tight, and then the one end of the disgorger as a slot Put it through the line, wrap it round, and then go down. So you saw what I did then. There's the disgorger, there's the slotted end. Keep it nice and tight, tuck it round the line a couple of times, down to the hook, and then you just gently tease it out, and the hook comes out without any problems. If it's starting to get a bit messy, don't even go down that road cut the line. It's preferable to leave a hook in there with a little bit of line on than it is to start creating all sorts of issues in the in the fish's stomach. It'll soon shed the hook anyway without any problem but we don't want to create problems at all for the fish itself but if you are going fishing uh, this type of fishing certainly especially for perch because they are quite greedy you definitely 
definitely need a disgorger. In fact, I would go as far as to say to go fishing for perch in the way that I am now with a hook and a worm, uh, that it is actually irresponsible to set out without one of these. Another fish on and another perch. Again, uh, not a big one, but very welcome, as I said, with the first one in these conditions. There it is. Dorsal fin erect. Beautiful, aren't they? set now. It's had a, a nice pull round, which I think is probably the best perch of the session so far, and it is. Not a massive fish of course, but under the circumstances, with the conditions being the way they are, definitely made me a happy camper. my final outing of the week for perch and I certainly am up for the challenge. <laughs> there was no doubt in that when I decided that at the beginning of the week the conditions have actually deteriorated and the canal is iced over. I would say it's about 99% iced over but I'm fishing the 1% that isn't. There's always a little bit next to a lock, next to a uh, some sort of movement, an overflow coming in uh, to the canal. There's always some little spot that you can set up in and as long as I can get that bait in the water then I've got a chance. I know it'll be tough, the water temperature has plummeted and it's the lowest for about uh, about two years because I take readings on a regular basis but I'm watching my tip when that tip starts to move I'll be a happy camper but regardless of that and this is important I'll enjoy the session and I'll get something from it and that's important isn't it for us as anglers it's not always about catching big fish sometimes it's just about being out there and I'm not building myself up to a blank by the way I'm always hopeful I'm always confident but also and especially in circumstances like this you have to be realistic as well Location, location, location. I'm not talking about a television program. I'm referring to where the fish lie all through the fishing season. Where we fish, where we choose to set up is an important part of successful angling, but especially so at this time of the year. One of the things that we have to bear in mind is that the fish generally, and I'm perch fishing this week, so speaking specifically of them, that they won't be so active. Now, of course, what we have to do then is in the summer, for example, you can more or less fish anywhere in the knowledge that the perch shoals will turn up at some point or another in your swim when you're on the canal. But now the fish aren't active, in fact, especially so uh, today, but during the course of this week, they've been holed up, if you like. They've been in a particular spot. So what we have to do is look for those spots, things like overhanging uh, bushes, overhanging trees, overhanging vegetation, uh, stone structures, locks, bridges, all those things. They are a, a, a food source, of course, but also, perhaps more importantly, at this time of the year, they offer safety. Think of yourself as a fish and the water temperature is falling and you need somewhere to chill out, literally, for a few days. Where do you go to? You go to somewhere where you feel safe. So instinctively, the fish will head for those sort of places. So if we can, obviously today is difficult with the uh, canal being iced up. I've got a fish, you know, where the water isn't frozen. But when we can, it's important to set up in the right place. Today is a, is a totally unusual uh, situation. It's going to be difficult. I'm not talking my chances down. But at the start of this week, although the water temperature was low and the conditions were harsh, I caught. And I caught 
primarily, and one of many factors really, but I caught primarily because I was in the right location. I'm a keen follower of water temperature for obvious reasons especially in the winter and I normally share the readings on my Twitter account or my, my Facebook page and I get a lot of positive response from that and what I've done from this year is I've actually designated a page on my website so that they can all be kept together. Now you may not fish the venues that I'm on but what it does is it gives you a bit of an idea of what the temperature trend is. So you might be on a, a similar canal but 10 miles away. But you'll get an idea if I'm fishing the canals that week where the temperature is going. You may not be on my river, you may be on a, a similar river or further upstream or downstream. But at least you get a bit of an idea of where things are going. So if you're interested in that, then check out my website. It's on the, uh, on the header at the top of the page, along with the About Me and my YouTube channel. And hopefully it will be of help to you. I'm actually getting a few taps. I can't call them bites, that would be taking it too far. You know when kids are picking at the food, I just imagine that the, there are fish out there, obviously, and that's what they're doing. Now, getting one there would be great to uh, get one while I'm talking, wouldn't you get one on? But I uh, can't really call them bites, as I say, but it's certainly exciting in these conditions. I know I'm going on about them, but I want to, to really lay down the picture of just how tough it is at the moment and to uh, get a little bit of action, albeit... An inquiry at the moment is uh, it's quite exciting. I think my excitement level has just gone up a couple of notches. Hey, I'm into one now. I've had several little uh, half-hearted plucks. And it's a bream. I was wondering if it was a perch, actually. I thought it's a cracker if it is. I'll tell you something, though. I'm just happy to catch in these conditions. Excellent in the net. Never been so happy with a, a one and a half pound, two pound bream in my life. There you go. Certainly two pound I think. Anyway, this little fella definitely deserves some special treatment. Excellent. All right, let's get him back. The video comes to an end. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going home to thaw out. Anyway, check out my website. I publish a blog every Saturday and I have done so for 602 consecutive Saturdays. This actual blog entry, there's a video and also a written uh, part as well. 602 consecutive Saturdays. People say to me, that's dedication. Well, of course it is, but it's also a labor of love. Anyway, I'll be back next week. Out and about yourself tight lines.